iOS gives us some really powerful APIs for working with strings, including breaking them up into arrays, removing white space, and even checking them for spelling errors. Now, we've looked at some of these previously. I wanna recap them here, and at least one major addition we'll use in this project. Now, in this project, we're loading a text file from our app bundle, containing 10,000 eight-letter words. It'll start our game off. They'll be stored one word per line. So really what we want to do is break that up into an array of strings and choose a random word from there. Now, as you've seen previously, Swift gives us a method called components separated by. It'll take a, a string and break it up on a boundary of our choosing. So we get back an array of strings. For example, we could say if I had a test method here, let input equals a string A space B space C. And now let letters be input dot components separated by space. We'll get back a three item array containing A, B and zero. And, and C, sorry, zero, C. Um, we can do the same thing for multiple lines. Just like our program, right? Now in programming, almost universally, but not quite universally, thanks, thanks to Windows, um, we have a special character sequence, sequence which refers to a new line, which is backslash n. For example, if I said, let input equals quote, 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 a, b, c, quote, 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 and then said, let letters equals input dot components separated by backslash n, I'm saying find the line breaks and give me back an array of three items, a, b, and c. That'd be in letters now. Regardless of what string we split on, the result is going to be an array of strings. That's what it does here. From there, we can go ahead and read values like normal by indexing into the array. So letters zero, letters one, letters two will be C, for example. But as you've seen previously, we can also pull a random letter out by using the random element uh, method. We can say let letter equals letters dot random element and get back a string. Now, although we know A, B, and C was in there, so we'll at least get back one item in the array, here we can see we'll get back three, A, B, and C. But random element returns back to us an optional string, not a real string, a full string, because the array could have been empty. Swift can't tell at compile time whether the array is empty or not. So we've got to use nil coalescing to eliminate the possibility. Another useful string method we looked at previously is called trimming characters in, which asks Swift to remove certain kinds of characters from the start and end of a string. This uses the type character set. So you can say remove all white space, for example. Uh, that means tabs, spaces, line breaks, column breaks, whatever, all at once. And it's built right into this kind of code. So we could say something like, uh, let trimmed equals letter question mark dot trimming characters in dot white spaces and new lines. It is perfect for this particular project. There is one last piece of string functionality I wanna cover before we go on to the main project. And it's the ability to check for misspelled words. Now, this is provided to us through a class called UI text checker. The UI part of that name signals that it comes from UIKit. UI table view is a table control for UIKit. UI text checker is, is the text checking component of UIKit. Um, <laughs> this means, yes, it comes from UIKit, but it also means it's written for Apple's older programming language before Swift, Objective-C, which is bluntly very old at this point. I mean, Swift's 2014, right? So talking pre-2014. Um, it is available for us to use in Swift, all of Objective-C stuff is, but the API for using it's a bit grungy because it wasn't really designed for modern Swift. So I'll show you how it works. So we're using it in the project. If we have a word like uh, Swift, that's a start, right? We've got our word here. That's the first step. Create a word that contains, that contains something to check. In our case, uh, uh, the word Swift. Then we'll have our checker. That is a UI text checker. That's the first step. <laughs> Second step is we've got to tell this checker how much of our string we want to check. 
Now, if you imagine a spell checker reading through a document in the for Word processing app, for example, you might only want to check the text that the user selected, or perhaps from here to the end, or from there to the cursor, or who knows what. Um, and that's what it's for. We can say what range you want to work with, but there's a catch, which is that Swift uses a very clever, very advanced way of working with strings, which allows it to handle complex characters like emoji in exactly the same way it handles basic English characters. However, Objective-C does not use this method of storing letters, which means we've got to ask Swift to create an Objective-C string range using the entire length of all our characters. And it looks like this. Let range equals an NS range, location zero, length, word, dot UTF-16, dot count. So UTF-16 is what's called a character encoding. It's a, it's a way of storing letters inside a string. We use it here so Objective-C understands Swift's strings and how they're stored. It's a nice bridging format for connecting the two. NS range, that's proper old school Objective-C. NS next step, the company that Jobs founded after Apple, which is then acquired by Apple and became you know, Mac OS X. Uh, this is what we're saying here is I'll make a range of a string starting at zero and being as long as the UTF-16 length of our word, the fullest possible length of our word. That's step two. Third, we want to ask our text checker to report where it found any misspellings in our word, passing in that range to check, as well as a position to start within the range. Do you want to do things like find, find next, find next, find next again, 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 whether it should uh, wrap around or not, if you imagine going to the end, should we go back to the beginning again or not? And then what language to use for the dictionary. So we could say, let misspelled range be equal to checker dot range of misspelled word. Now you can see it selected here. Just go ahead and press uh, return to fill in the uh, co-completion for this. Makes it much easier. We're checking the string word. That's our input, the word Swift. What range to check? How much a string do you want to check? All of it. So that's our range. Starting at where to start inside that range. Zero. When it's finished, do you want to wrap the beginning again? No, we don't. False. And language EN. English is fine. This will send back another Objective-C string range. It will tell us where the misspelling was found. <laughs> Even then, there's another complexity here, which is that Objective-C did not have the concept of optionals. It has no idea what optionals are, and so instead it relied on special values that meant, whoops, missing data. In this instance, if this Objective-C range comes back empty, i.e. if it was, there was no spelling error in the word Swift, we'll get back a special value called ns not found. And so we can say, uh, let all good, was a spell, a string all spelled correctly, be true if misspelled range dot location is equal to ns not found. So all good would now be true if the word was spelled correctly, otherwise it'd be false. Okay, that's enough API exploration. Go ahead and reset your project. It's time to begin the main work.